Okay, hello. So today I thought I would address some questions that I've been receiving in the comments about applying Barry Harris's thinking to modern jazz songs, and specifically to So What, uh, which is the uh, quintessential modal jazz song. Now, we all know Barry self-describes as, a, as an inveterate bebopper. He, he'll, he'll say things like, I've been playing piano since I was four years old, and I never played a mode in my life, you know. Uh, and that may well be true, but, um, but I found that not only can you apply Barry's stuff to, to modern stuff, you can't even play the modern stuff right without knowing Barry's stuff first. You know, being myself a product of the music school industrial complex, um, I was brought up in a tradition that encompasses more than bebop and heavily emphasizes more modern styles like post-bop and modal and atonal and other things like that. And, and I thought, yeah, that's the hip stuff. But really, you, I found out after many, way too long that you can't play it right without knowing Barry's way first. Um, and this is a perfect illustrative example. Um, uh, I'll share a story with you, and it's the story of everything's close. Okay, so the story basically goes like this. I'm early for class. I'm at the piano. I'm noodling around, and uh, and Barry walks in and he sits across from the piano and he watches me. And I asked him a question about something, and I don't even remember what it was because, like Barry always will do, he will answer a completely different question. Not one that you asked, but the question you should have asked. And, um, and, and this is one of those examples. I asked my silly little question about I don't even know what. And he said, looky here. He says, everything's close. Everything's close. Play a G, play a C6. Play a C6, okay. Now play a G flat six. See, everything's close. Now get up. I got to start the class. That's literally how it went. It was literally like that. Just get up. All right, so... But then you think about it and you start scratching behind the surface and then you realize, wait a minute, that simple idea has far reaching implications and there's your next six months of practice time. That's what happened. So let's look at, take a look at this. G flat six and C six. Everything's very close. If you think about it, a tritone is the farthest possible away that you can get in music. If I go one more beyond a tritone, well, now I'm actually back to being a fourth away, right? If I invert, I'm back to being a fourth away. The farther away I get, the closer I get to the other, to the inversion of where I started. So really, the farthest possible point is the tritone. And yet, the tritone is only, the, the chord is only half step away from the chord of tritone away. Uh, root position C6, C, E, G, A, is only half steps away from the s root first, second inversion of a G6. G flat, D flat, E flat, G flat, B flat. Let's look at the first inversion of the C6. That's right next door to the third inversion of the G flat 6. And similarly, the second inversion of the C6 goes to the root position of the G flat. And the third inversion of the C6, the thing that looks like the A minor 7, goes to the first inversion. So a first inversion goes to a third inversion. So there's a really beautiful symmetry here. So I thought about it and I was like, okay, why don't I make a little exercise for myself? So I made a little exercise, you know, and I, and I added it to my, uh, where is it? It's around here somewhere. Uh, right here it is. If you're like me, you like these little sweet, sweet water sound little, little folders. They're awesome. <laughs> Shout out. Okay, anyway, but you see it, eight, a half of an eight and a half by 11 page, and this is my, my, was my routine for a while. There's the 10 chord routine down here, and here's up a fifth down, and then you go down, and it says everything's close. Everything's close. 
up and down. So I practice this, everything's close. And here's the little exercise I came up with myself. And again, um, those of you uh, that are on my Patreon, I'm going to post a, a quick transcript of this, okay? So, but basically, this is, this is what I did. This is... I just arpeggiated them, and I found the, the nearest one, and sometimes I had to double back. When I got to that third inversion one, I had to double back to make it smooth. Here it is again. And, you know, down as well. Just a little exercise to practice it. Now, how does this apply to modern? Okay, well, I mean, you can already hear it, you know. It's, our, it's already, it's, it's, it's already, there's your McCoy right there. I mean, you know, if I'm doing a, if I'm applying a, 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 a C6 to an F major 7. I throw that, that little thing in and then there's your quote unquote out. Well, let's get back to, uh, so what, right? Okay, so they'll teach you, you know, it's all about these quart, quartal triads or, uh, you know, fourths. You know, if you think in terms of six chords though, the G6 to the F6, and then, of course, you can also do a C6 on it. Let's start with the C6. Remember, you could do C6, which goes to a G flat. But then you, then the song goes to E flat minor, which is a G flat. So there's your bridge. You could, you could do two or three choruses just on C and G flat on that song. Here it is. is really a D minor 7. F6 triad is, a uh, tritone is B6. We already talked about this. G. As we know, Barry's thinking says the important minor of G is D minor. That's your D Dorian. The D Dorian is the important minor of G7. So really the, and this is what you hear most people do, they think in terms of G7 for the D minor. Right? Do a G6 for the G7. And then you do the everything close thing. So it takes you out without taking you out. That's really what it is. 
right? Um, so any any place, any 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 place. Um, you know, let's say I'm doing. Uh, to the end of the song. Some people have to go up like that. And I don't know what other modern songs. Uh, anyway, the everything close idea is one of those ways between thinking in terms of sixth chords, which is a basic tenet of Barry's thinking, right? Uh, using the sixth chord rules, as we did on over so what, using the, the F, the G, and the C on the D minor. And then doing the quote unquote everything's close idea. That's just my name for it. Um, right there is the beginning of a, of a very respectable modern vocabulary based in Barry's strictly bebop thinking. So I hope this did shed some light on how really Barry's language is modern. And it's very core, um, you know. Barry does what he loves, which is bird and bud. Uh, but, but his thinking and his framework can be applied uh, just endlessly uh, beyond that into any style. Um, so I, I, I hope I, um, I demonstrated that uh, effectively. So uh, thanks again for all your questions and everything. Uh, consider visiting my Patreon, Isaac, uh, Patreon's slash Isaac Ra patreon.com slash Isaac Raz. Uh, I'll post a transcription of my little exercise uh, for my for my members where and if you you can become a member for as little as three dollars a month and and you get all kinds of you know bonus videos, Q and A's, still working on that, but I'll get those up. And uh, um, you know all kinds of exclusive content which which uh, which, and also you'll be helping me out a great deal. Um, hope this was useful, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe and keep swinging out there. <laughs>